Let's talk about how I use ticker symbol SPY as a day trader. And hopefully I can offer you up a little kind of tips and tricks to not necessarily make everything a guaranteed trade because that doesn't exist, but just to make life a little easier as a trader and to help give you a little reference point and a little edge that can allow you to, you know, just stay in trades longer, stay in trades without freaking out. I mean, if you're anything like I was when I was first getting started in a beginner day trader, I would freak out pretty easily and I would get scared out of trades and then things would go in my favor. And it was a very frustrating experience. So I mean, if you can relate to any of that, you're not alone. All traders have been there and I don't quite know if that ever goes away. But like I said, I wanna show you how to use SPY to assist with this. Now, a couple things before I go any further. First off, I'm gonna yeah, spend some time with the chalkboard talking in theory, but then I'm also gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about with an actual trade from my personal trading results. That way you know that you know what I'm talking about here is just not my, well, I think this is how it's supposed to work. No, you're gonna see exactly how things can play out. Also as a reference point, this is, I've, I've talked about this before in other videos, but I wanted to put a little spin on it here uh, with kind of another analogy. But if you're curious about you know how this works in another video, then I'll put a link down below. And in that analogy, I use kind of wind as an example, but in this, I wanna go another route because I, I realize we all kind of have different visuals. So maybe this visual will help uh, work better for you or just maybe drive home the facts. So again, what we care about, what is very helpful is ticker symbol SPY, if you're not familiar with that. That's just an ETF that basically says, what's the market doing, right? That encapsulates everything. So without getting too far down in the weeds, just understand that SPY is an ETF and it's an ETF that's just judging the entire S&P 500, which again, it's just the markets, right? So if you're gonna go and wanna tell your friends how the markets did today, you could US use SPY as that reference point. So the way SPY works is within two branches, right? You have of a trade, you could go, long or you could go short now for those of you that are brand new just getting started going short means it doesn't mean well you only hold for like two minutes it means that you make money when prices go down super bizarre concept mind-blowing the first time you hear it but yes believe it or not in the world of trading you can make money when prices go down and that's what shorting represents so now how does the SPY work in the sense of going long well, the way I like to envision it is this. We have a nice little balloon. The balloon here being SPY. And what is, a te and I'm gonna try not to nerd out here with my physics, but the force here is, what do, what do balloons do? If you let go of a balloon, what happens to it? Oh, and then your kids start crying because they lost their balloon, it's a disaster. So all right, so the pointer being, the force of a balloon is upwards, right? It floats higher. And the way you can envision this is down here, attached to the bottom part of that balloon, you have some sort of ticker. That could be Apple, that could be Tesla, that could be Boeing, that could be Facebook, it could be Coca-Cola, but some sort of company out there, I want you to envision it as a ticker. And when the general markets are rising, when the pressure of the markets, when the force of the market, whatever sort of terminology you wanna use is going up like a balloon, just understand that that's gonna help pull up everything including tickers. Now, it's not guaranteed to happen, so I, I should have probably noted this. I'm not saying this is a guaranteed strategy, but like I said, just little things to help give you peace of mind, to help give you little edges. But if the markets as a whole are floating up like a balloon, then you know what? It's going to help provide whatever ticker you're trading some additional support to the upside. Now, let's talk about the other side of things, to the downside. So in this situation, I want you to focus this as the good old... Ball and chain, right? So what is the ball? SBY. And if you have a ball and chain, what is that doing to you? Well, from a force perspective, and let's look at it like this. Let's say you have a ball and chain around your ankle in water and you're trying to swim. What pressure is that exerting on you? Well, that is definitely a pressure that is forcing you down, that is pressuring you down. Any sort of variation of that terminology, but the idea here, pushing down. So same concept here, then over here you have some sort of ticker symbol. And this is the scenario that you're gonna see here in just a second that really takes place. So what I'm gonna do here is actually assign, not just throw out some random thing, but actually tell you that this was ticker symbol BA, Boeing. So what you're gonna see in just a second is me taking a trade and to use terminology, going short on Boeing. Again, if you're new, that means that 
I think Boeing's price is gonna go down. I wanna see Boeing's price go down because that means as a short, I'm making money. So that's the premise of the trade going in and that is what I believe is going to happen. And you're gonna see that things, you know, I don't wanna spoil it, but things don't quite go as smoothly as possible. But to not necessarily pat myself on the back, but the one thing I did do right is I understood the concept that your sure, Boeing wasn't necessarily behaving in the way that I wanted it to behave, but I knew that there was the ball and chain of SPY attached to its ankle and trying to drag it down, trying to drag it down. Boeing sitting there trying to swim, trying to swim. And it was doing a good job for a while of swimming, but eventually, like I said, it's a little spoiler alert, the ball and chain was just too much. So let's get, in, let's get out of the chalkboard, out of the world of theory, and let me show you exactly what I mean. What I'm gonna do here is get short at 195.09, because I think this thing, there we go. Might wanna pull back some. So I got a little bit of a move in my favor, but now I wanna get this thing a little bit of room to wiggle around. So not the greatest candle that currently formed, but like I said, you gotta give these things a little bit of, little bit of wiggle room here. So let's see if it wants to get back below 195. Well, that was a pretty quick turnaround. But not looking so good right now. If it does come back down to 195, I will be potentially looking to add to the position because that would imply this bounce here was just a, a pretty much a failed bounce, which is good. So watching 195, like I said again, potentially looking to add. So added 50 shares more. So now I have 150, average of 195, 11. So let's see if this thing can work its way back down below the 195 mark, <clears throat> excuse me. Well, this goes up over 196.75, I'm gonna have to take the loss here. Cause now all of a sudden it is bouncing So this one very well might, might, might have fooled me here. But perhaps not. What's well, a nice, nice candle there that's forming. Wow, so much so that I might look to add another allotment down if it looks like it wants to finally break down through 195. That's a very nice candle. I'm not out of the woods yet, still work that needs to be done, but. Some interesting action here taking place for sure. Like I said, if it want, looks like it wants to roll back down there through 195 would probably be interested in adding again to the position. So I did just add, and now I have 300 shares. So let's see if this thing can finally get down through 195. A lot of weakness here. If it goes through 195, it should move pretty big. I'm not feeling very good about it though because right now the markets are moving down and here Boeing is just kind of chopping sideways. So at this point, not feeling very hopeful. Again, markets are pulling back nice and then here Boeing is just being stubborn and going sideways.
Can it get down through 195? Well, we're at 195. No, we were. And it held very, very strong. But I mean, if it fails now, yeah, this is not good. Markets are pulling back, and Boeing is basically going sideways here. So now if the markets bounce at all, this is not going to turn out well. So I am not feeling very good about this trade right now. Yep, markets are at lows, and here Boeing is just going sideways. Come on, Boeing. You're supposed to be following the market here. Well, and yeah, now the markets are bouncing here a little bit and up goes Boeing. So I'm fully planning on taking a loss here now. What a shame. What a shame. Once well, teasing me like it wants to go back down. But at this point, I just don't believe it. The markets are just, I mean, like I said, moving to lows and Boeing is just simply going sideways. So all it takes is for, like I said, just a little bit of a bounce in the markets. Sorry, Boeing, I don't believe you. I want to believe you, but, and I want to be wrong here. I want to be wrong. Hey, I am wrong. Let's see if we, but <laughs> it didn't last very long, but let's give it another try. So broke down through there, but then that fast bounced right back up. Can it actually get more? There we go. All right. All right, well, I'll go with 100 shares now. Put my stop at 195.01. So all right, well, it's gonna be a winning trade. Now it's just a question of how big of a winning trade is it actually gonna be. So now I'm just moving my stop loss down. And this is a good spot to be in where you just have no idea how big a stop or how big a win is gonna be. Because again, I have no idea how far down this is gonna go, and that's a, a great spot to be in. If this breaks down below 194, I'll adjust my stop again, but not until then. So can we get a breakdown below 194? So all out there for a $143 trade. Took some patience, took some persistence, but you can see right here, Boeing, the market was just too much. The markets was like an anchor, just so notice. The markets were pulling back, as I was saying, and then I was uh, you know, commenting, well, geez, the markets are pulling back and Boeing is just sitting here, sitting here, going sideways. But the markets kept going down, and like any anchor, no matter how strong an individual stock actually is, eventually, it's just not gonna be able to keep up anymore. It, it's gonna run out of energy. It, it's kinda like if you envision a swimmer and they have a ball and chain tied to their leg, yeah, they can tread water for a little bit. They can tread water for a little bit, but eventually, if that ball and chain keeps getting heavier and heavier, or in other words, if the markets keep on dropping further and further, eventually that swimmer is just, they're not gonna be able to take it anymore and they're gonna get dragged down too. Pretty crazy, huh? I mean, it was, it was a frustrating experience, Boeing, was just going sideways, sideways, sideways. I mean, it was really trying to fight off, fight off, fight off, and swim and swim, going sideways, but eventually the ball and chain with that downward force caught up to it, and you saw that Boeing just cannot tread that water any longer, 
And from that point, it finally went down, which allowed me to, to make a, a nice little gain on it. But had I not been keeping attend, or, you know, keeping my focus on SPY, had I not even realized about this principle, I could have, I mean, you heard me multiple times saying, oh, this is not good. Oh, this is not good. I mean, I was pretty much wrong. I thought I was gonna get stopped out. But the reason why you, and a good question would be, well, Clay, if you thought you were gonna get stopped out, why wouldn't you just have gotten out at that point? Because of this, because the SPY was going down and it was just a matter of time before that ball and chain finally overcame uh, you know, the, the strength that Boeing was showing. So that's why I didn't get out. And that's why you don't wanna get too freaked out just because something's maybe not operating exactly as it should. I mean, it's not like Boeing was exploding upwards in that situation. Yeah, you gotta get out. It just simply wasn't dropping as soon as I thought it would, but it's, you know, it was still just treading water, but the ball and chain ultimately went out and I was able to make some money. So hopefully this little uh, tip can help you out. But yeah, I would highly recommend you get the SPY. And I should note, I would say use the five minute time frame on it. So five minute SPY, very helpful indicator, very helpful uh, little kind of side thing you can have to just make trading, you know, not guaranteed success, but to give yourself that little edge and to help you out. So if you enjoyed this video and just videos like this, easy way to communicate that to me is just please hit that like button down below. That way my, I know that, that I'm using my time properly with these sorts of videos. Also comments, questions, suggestions, leave those down below. If you've ever watched any of my past videos, then you know that I do read and will reply to comments. So all those down below. Then also check out the channel as a whole, lots of other videos. If you enjoy that little live trade video section that you saw, there's an entire playlist of live trade videos. So you can see, I wanna say there's like over 400 of them at this point, but yeah, go check out that. And then hopefully you decide to hit that red subscribe button. I'd love to have you subscribe to the channel. But yeah, get out there, consider using SPY and understand that the SPY does exert these forces on whatever ticker symbol you may be trading. First off, thanks so much for watching the entire video. Real quick, before you go, I wanna invite you to a live webinar, web class, training, workshop, online event, whatever you wanna call it, but it will be me live revealing to you what I discovered that has allowed me to transform myself from being an employee to being my own boss, including how I had only one losing day out of 73 days in total. I'm going to cover three keys that have helped me unlock profitable consistency within the markets. The first key is super weird, but in a productive type of way. The second key is super awesome because it quite literally is wired into our DNA as humans, making it very easy to use. But in a cruel way, this becomes a pitfall for many traders. I'll explain it all though, including how to avoid the pitfall that it creates for some. And yeah, the third key, when you hear it, sounds way too good, way too, good to be true, but it's not, and I'll show you how it all works. Then at the end, I open it up for a question and answer session that is, again, totally live. Even if you can't make the live session, please still sign up as it will be recorded, and you can go back and watch the replay that I will send you. Click the image on the screen or click the link down in the description box so you can get the date and time and claim your spot, which I should note is limited due to the fact that this truly is a live event. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, I'll be seeing you soon.